The Youth's Instructor, October 8, 1896 Irreverence in the Youth It is your privilege, dear young friends, to glorify God upon the earth. In order to do this, you must direct your minds away from things that are superficial, frivolous, and unimportant, to those that are of eternal worth. We are living in an age when all should especially give heed to the injunction of the Savior, Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. One of your strong temptations is to irreverence. God is high and holy, and to the humble believing soul, His house on earth, the place where His people meet for worship, is as the gate of heaven. The song of praise, the words spoken by Christ's ministers, are God's appointed agencies to prepare a people for the church above, for that loftier worship into which there can enter nothing that is impure, unholy. From the sacredness that was attached to the earthly sanctuary among the children of Israel, Christians may learn how they should regard the place where the Lord meets with His people. God Himself gave rules of order, perfect and exact, to be observed in His worship. But there has been a change, not for the better but for the worse, in habits in reference to religious worship. The spirit of reverence has largely passed away. Reverence is greatly needed in the youth of this age. I am alarmed as I see children and youth of religious parents so heedless of the order and propriety that should be observed in the house of God. While God's servants are presenting the words of life to the people, some will be reading, others whispering and laughing. Their eyes are sinning by diverting the attention of those around them. This habit, if allowed to remain unchecked, will grow and influence others. Children and youth should never feel that it is something to be proud of, to be indifferent and careless in meetings where God is worshipped. God sees every irreverent thought or action, and it is registered in the books of heaven. He says, I know thy works. Nothing is hid from his all-searching eye. If you have formed in any degree the habit of inattention and indifference in the house of God, exercise the powers you have to correct it, and show that you have self-respect. Practice reverence until it becomes a part of yourself. Do not have so little reverence for the house and worship of God as to communicate with one another during the sermon. If those who commit this fault could see the angels of God looking upon them and marking their doings, they would be filled with shame and abhorrence of themselves. God wants attentive hearers. It was while men slept that the enemy sowed tares. Nothing that is sacred, nothing that pertains to the worship of God, should be treated with carelessness and indifference. When the word of life is spoken, you should remember that you are listening to the voice of God through His delegated servant. Do not lose these words through inattention. If heeded, they may keep your feet from straying into wrong paths. I am sorry to see that many youth who profess religion do not have any knowledge of a change of heart. There is no transformation of character. They do not realize that it is a solemn thing to profess to be a Christian. Their life is entirely inconsistent with a religious frame of mind. If they were of that number who are indeed the sons and daughters of God, they would not be filled with nonsense and pleasantry and trifling. Neither would the foolish remarks and conduct of others awaken the same in them. A mind that is intent upon having the prize, upon securing heaven, will reject with firm, determined purpose every attempt at wit and jest concerning religious things. 
there is great danger in indifference upon this subject. No folly is so subtle as thoughtlessness and levity. On every hand, we see youth of a frivolous character. All young people of this class should be avoided, for they are dangerous. If they profess to be Christians, they are the more to be dreaded. Their minds have been cast in an inferior mold, and it will be far easier for them to bring you down to their level than for you to bring them up to elevated and ennobling thoughts and a correct course of action. Let your companions be those who observe decorum in words and deportment. In order to do your best in showing forth the praises of God, your associations must be such as to keep in your minds the sacred distinct from the common. If you would have broad views, noble thoughts, and aspirations, choose associations that will strengthen right principles. Let every thought and the purpose of every action bend to the securing of the future life with eternal happiness.